In this video, what I want to look at is how you can take user input from a user and pass that user input to an API, query, get some data, have that data come back into your program and visualize something on the screen. So this is a, an example that I built in the previous video, which I'll link to below. Um, and what this example is doing is it's querying an API called Open Weather Map. It's sending a city. The city that it's sending, you can see right there, is London. And then it gets back some data about London. What's the current temperature? What's the current humidity? And in this example, I'm pulling that data out into two variables and drawing two circles on the screen. So first I gotta admit something, which is that this is like a, perhaps the, the least visually interesting you know, data visualization I, you know, anybody ever has ever done. So I'm making, I don't have, I don't have a visual bone. <laughs> So I'm, but I'm demonstrating the technique. So what you would do, hopefully, with my with this technique is thinking of a new way of presenting information via weather or doing some type of animation. There's lots of possibilities. But what I want to show you here is, no matter how many times I run this, it's always just going to query the API. Boom! As soon as the program starts, and then it's going to get that weather from London, and it's never going to query the API again. So how do we make something that when the user enters a city, that we get that, uh, when, that, that then we query the API, show the information. The user could then enter another city, we get that information, query the API again. So how could we have query the API over time while the program is running? How do we think of that as a sequence of events? And how do we tie that to drawing? We being me right now, and then you, I got this thing about pronouns. It's really like a problem that's in my head all the time. I can only think about what pronoun I use, what's the, but I'll link to something in the description below about why I think about that all the time. Okay, so let's make that happen. So first of all, I need somewhere to get user input. So right now, what this actually is is a web page just with this canvas on it. So what I would like to do is add to the web page something where the user could uh, type in some, uh, type in a city. So guess what? I'm going to add to, there's an HTML page associated with this JavaScript code. It's the, it's the page that's loading this code. So I'm going to go there first. So in this P5.js editor, I'm going to hit the settings button and say show sidebar. And then there's a bunch of extra stuff in here that I'm not using because this was built. And I'm going to go to this index.html file. And now in the HTML body, what I want to do is add paragraph, and then I'm going to add an input. Can you see this? I'm going to add an input field. Uh, and I'm going to give it an ID. We'll call it city. And I'll put London in there, and I'll say city colon. So now, what I've added is just some HTML that on the page I want to see a field that a user could type something into. And if we run this, you can see, there it is. Oops. And by the way, so I did that incorrectly. Look at this. So what I wanted to do, if we look back at that window, uh, this, is, this was going so well until I got confused. Like, look what's here. What I wanted to do is I wanted to have the word London populate that, sit, that, that text input field automatically. And I thought, I don't know how to do this, but it must, it, sometimes it works this way. I could just create this HTML input element and put London in the middle. But I forgot that the text that is in the text input element is actually its value. Value being an attribute of this HTML element. So if I want to do that, I just need to say value equals London. So now if I fix that, and let me make this a little bit wider so you can kind of see it, and I run this again, you can see, there we go. So I now have this text input box at the top with the word London in it. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now maybe I should also add, very briefly, I'll put like a line break, and then I'm going to add a button with an ID called submit, and I'll say submit. So now I've also added an HTML element, a button. So I have a text input element pre-populated with London, and I have a button. So when I press that button, I'm going to ask the API to give me the weather for whatever city is in that field. Excellent. Okay, so let's look at this. Run this. You can see, there we go. Now I could do a better job like styling this and putting line breaks in and that sort of thing. But the point here is that I could do this and then I could type New York. And I want to see what I, what's in the canvas, what's in the drawing change based on that current weather. So how do we do that? I'm excited. Are you excited? <laughs> I don't know. You shouldn't be as excited as me. I'm a little bit excitable. 
it's a bit of a problem. It gives me a lot of anxiety in life. But I'm, but, but I'm doing well today, and I'm, and I'm happy to talk about this with you. OK, so let's, let's first, to, to answer this question, we have to look at something. We have to look at this URL. Look at this URL. It's a long thing. I figured it out in the last video that I got. I have a path to the API. I have some weather. I have a question mark. Q equals London. That's the city. App ID. That's my API key. Units equal metric. That's giving me the information in Celsius, right? So how do we? What's what? What do we need to do? And to figure this out, I'm going to come over here to my trusty friend, the whiteboard. Hi, trusty friend, the whiteboard. Uh, and um, let's think about this URL. So most APIs, if you're making an API query, it's very similar to typing a URL into the browser. In fact, if I pasted that URL into the browser, we're going to see the data associated with it. And I, kind of, I kind of wish I was doing that right now. Let's do that for a second. I'll come back to the whiteboard, right? So let me go over here, and I'm going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to go into Chrome, and I'm going to paste it in up here, and I'm going to look and see, look, look, here's the data coming in. And you can see that up here, is the city. So even if I just, in the brow up here, if I just change that to New York, for example, you can see, aha, now I have the weather associated with New York, which the temperature about, you know, uh, 18 degrees Celsius, that's about right. It's actually quite a beautiful day. <laughs> the sun is shining. I don't know why I'm inside talking to a camera all by myself. This, I make the same stupid joke in all my videos about how I'm talking to a camera by myself, but it is true. Okay, so um, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so now you can see the way that you could get a different city. You know, I could, now I could, over here I could type Tokyo, and I'm going to get the weather for Tokyo. The way that I get the data from a different city is to change the URL. So somehow I'm able to do that manually in the browser. Somehow I need to figure out a way of doing that in code. And the reason why I was coming over here is, oops, was I not... No, I was here. Was I in the right place the whole time? Missing London already. Yeah. I, somebody tell me in the chat. Hopefully I record. I'll have to fix this video if, ah, no, I'm over here. This is like uh, Charlie Chaplin. Like, da, 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 da. someone play, like, download this, edit this, and add some like music to it. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not like Charlie Chaplin. I wish I was like Charlie Chaplin. That would be good. Um, okay, so, uh, all right, so how do we do this? I don't know. This video is, I, I kind of want to re-record this video, but. Um, so in my code, there is a URL, and it's one long string. It starts with like HTTP, it has like open weather map, dot, blah, 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 blah. So somehow we have to figure out, well, the way that to do this is to piece together the URL from its components, one of which happens to be dynamic that's that's happening with input from the user. So for example, so one way that I could think about doing this is I could say var API equals HTTP colon slash slash openweathermap.org slash weather question mark. So like this is the beginning of the API query. Then I might have another variable called like city, which I say, these are strings which I say is London. Then I might have another variable where I say something like API key equals you know, my crazy API key. And then when I want to make the actual URL, which is the actual URL that I will send to the API, then all I need to do is say I want to have the API plus the city plus the API key, right? Remember, the plus symbol with text, right? Two plus two equals four, but the string two plus the string two. Right? This is actually a valid use of air quotes, by the way. You usually do, air quotes is just kind of an obnoxious thing in general. But I feel like if you're trying to indicate a string, like this is like a time in my life where I'm allowed to use air quotes. Now I feel ridiculous. But um, the, the, two, the two in quotes plus two in quotes is 22, right? Two plus two is Two, two, not twenty-two, but two, two. So with this is two, two, like a, like a thing that you wear when you're doing ballet. Um, so this, I'm trying, I'm trying much too hard to be in, more interesting than talking about this. This is, this is not going well. It feels forced today. Um, so this, um, so this is the way that you can put together the pieces of an API call in uh, as a as a as a URL um, by having them in components. The whole reason I'm talking about this is because now this one can be dynamic. 
So if city is not a hard coded value, it's coming from the user and every time we want to query the API, this always stays the same, this always stays the same, this is the thing that changes. So let's go see if we can add that to the code and make this work. I'm over here now. Okay, so coming back to the program, let me minimize this. Coming back to the program, oh God. Uh, we can look now at the components of this URL. So let's say what I want is all the way up to here is gonna be kind of like the first part. So I'm just gonna call this the API, and maybe I'll call it like API path. So sort of like the path or the API, let's just call it API. <laughs> then I'm gonna make a variable called city, and I'm gonna make that London. Then I'm gonna make a variable called like API key, and it's gonna be this whole thing. And then I'm gonna make a variable, oops, and then I'm gonna make a variable called uh, uh, units and add this. So you can see now, and I, 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 think if I, if, I think if I make this a little bit wider, unfortunately like it's sort of hard to fit everything out, but now I've got it, I've got it. You can see now, and what do I have some, I have some like weird warnings here, missing a semicolon somewhere. Uh, I don't see my semi, oh, you know what I did is I used a double quote and a single quote, that'll fix things up. Okay, so you can see now that I broke the API call into its parts. So all of these things, all of these things are, uh, are, are not gonna, the API, API key and units are not gonna change. I always wanna query open weather map, I always want it in metric, and I always have this API key. Now of course your scenario might be different, but for this particular scenario, the only thing that changes is the city. And so now, when I wanna load the data, I would say var URL equals API plus city plus API key plus units. And now we can see, let's see, let's just make sure this still works as before. It still works as before. So instead of having the full API call as one long string, I now have it in pieces. And we can see if I change this to do New York, now I'm seeing the New York weather. You're just gonna have to trust that that's kind of the right values again because this is my pathetic little, I'm just drawing the temperature and the humidity as circles on the screen. Okay, so we're getting somewhere though because now I can move this, right? I can, I don't, this, this API call is happening in setup, only in setup. Where do I want it to happen now? If we look at this web page that I've made, I want that API call to happen when I click the submit button. So how do I make that happen? I need two steps. One, I need access to that DOM element. I need to select that DOM element. Then I also need to attach a mouse pressed event to that DOM element. So let's add those two things to this program. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, oops, whoops, yeah, var button equals select submit. So if you remember in the HTML page, the button has an ID, submit. So the ID is a way that I can select that element in my code and do things to it. So now in my code, as long as I select by the button's ID submit, I can now say button dot mouse pressed ask for, I don't like, ask, you know, <laughs> whether, whether ask, I don't know. You think of a better, I'm so bad at function names, you think of a better function name than me, but the event that I want is whether ask. So now I can take this and I can write a function called whether ask and I can paste that in there and oops, I need two parentheses and uh, by the way, I'm, I'm kind of standing in front of my code which is the thing that always happens. So if I move this over, that'll help you. So now, right, I selected the button. When I press the button, call weather ask. When I call weather ask, ask for the weather based on this URL that I've made of all these components from the API call. Now run this, and every time I hit, when I hit submit, I get that weather. Now notice, every time I hit submit, it's the same thing. Why? Because city is still hard-coded as New York. But now, we can do something really exciting. That's just a variable, right? Why not get the value of what? This text input field, why not get what's in that text input field and store that in that particular variable? This is gonna make things really, really great. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So first of all, I need, uh, I need a variable called input and I need to also select that input. Input equals select. Now I don't remember what ID I gave it. I gave it an ID city. So now I need to say select 
city. And then what am I doing here? I'm, instead of this, instead of city being hard coded as New York, I can override, you know, actually we don't even need this variable anymore, honestly, because we don't want to hard code the city, so I can take that out. And actually, instead of, I could make it a separate variable, but all I need to do now is put input.value here. Oops. So, right, because I've gotten that text input element there, I can get the value and add that to my API call. So, again, the path to the API doesn't change. My API key doesn't change. I always want it in metric units, but I want the city, that piece of it, to be from that text input field. And here we go. It's running, let's see it submit, and I've got London, and let's try some other cities like uh, Tokyo, <laughs> Los Angeles. You can see, oh, it's not very humid in Los Angeles. Uh, New York, Toronto, right? Okay, so you get it, it works. Oh, that's great that it works. So this is a, this is a nice thing to practice with APIs. I mean, this is kind of one sort of, you know, obvious way of doing things. You take some, from the, you take some uh, information from the user, and you send that to the API, you get some data back, you display the data back to the user. So I might suggest, you know, what else could you imagine here? Could you, could you create a checkbox? And whether the checkbox is checked, you would, when it's checked, you would get Celsius. When it's unchecked, you would get Fahrenheit. So could you, that would be one thing to try to add to this as an exercise, I think, if you're looking for like a technical exercise to do. You know, mostly I would say, can, what sort of data is in there? What kind of more interesting way can you display the data back? If it's raining, can you make it rain in the canvas? You know, again, these are kind of like obvious literal uh, uh, visual representations of the data. But I, I think you might be also be able to think more creatively. And, um, what I would like to do now, I think that kind of covers the whole basis. There's actually a, there's a missing piece here I just realized, which is that, so we've done two things. One, we've queried the API the moment the program runs, and then we're done. Now we've done a second thing. Anytime the user performs an action, like pressing a button, we query the API and we get data back. A third thing would be have the program automatically query the API every so often. And this is something you want to do if you have data that's changing a lot. And there's an, there's an example of, of an API that gives you the latitude longitude of the International Space Station, uh, where it is sort of above the Earth. And so that's an API that the space station is moving, I think, continuously, that you get different data all the time. So I would, would also like to do, maybe I'll do that in the next video, is look at how you query an API you know, over, how do you set, like, to do it every 100 milliseconds or every one second or every 30 seconds, and just have that happen in the background while an animation is continuing. So um, I'll take a look at that in the next video. And the other things I want to do in some of these future videos is just look at other APIs. New York Times is on my list. Wordnik is on my list, that sort of thing. So let's see. This ended up being like a very long video. It was like so short for a while. But I had this like section in the middle where I just like, I wasn't sure if I was in the right place. And I started like rambling about wearing a tutu. If you're still watching this video right now, you know, hashtag Schiffman tutu or something to let me know you were watching because no one's going to be at 18 minutes in this video, I swear. <laughs> OK. I, I think that's a thing that maybe I'll do at the end of, oh, hashtag Schiffman air quotes. I think I need to put Schiffman in there. Or maybe air, just stop watching already. Go, it's a beautiful, you know, hopefully you live somewhere where it's a beautiful day. And even if it's not a beautiful day, being outside is nice. <laughs> okay, I, uh, the mouse, even my mouse went to sleep even. That's how long I've been recording.